What is up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online video. This one we're going to be going over PI. We're going to be doing a little bit more advanced stuff, but I'm going to show you how to set up the planets required to make robotics. And this can be done on just a single character with just six planets. I'm doing this on the test server because all of my characters on live already have established PI. So I kind of wanted to show everything from the ground up and kind of explain the entire process. This is a great way to start making some relatively passive income while you're just kind of doing other things. Robotics is super easy. It's going to take four P1 and then you're going to convert that into two different P2s. And then those P2s will end up making robotics, which is considered a P3. All right, before we get started, let's go ahead and go over kind of the chain at which we need to kind of go through for robotics. So here's robotics. As you can see, it's going to take um, consumer electronics and then mechanical parts. And if you go into each one of these, then you'll see that mechanical or consumer electronics will take toxic metals and uh, sheryl structures, I guess is how you say it. And then we'll go back mechanical parts we're going to need reactive metals and precious metals once we have all that made we'll be able to produce these on a pro uh, processing planet and then we'll just take that product and we'll have an entire planet dedicated to robotics now if you want it this is very easy to scale if you want to scale it with additional alts the planet we're going to set up for the robotics is going to have essentially 24 advanced factories which is a lot if you were going to actually have enough p2 to feed that for an entire 24-hour period like non-stop you would uh you would have to have quite a bit of other alts but you don't necessarily need process planets on those alts what i try to do is i have all the processing planets on my main and then my alts will essentially just create the p1 the tier one so very easily scaled we'll be able to you know if you want to scale to different alts you can just have additional toxic metal planet additional shell structure planet and then additionally a um, reactive and precious metal planet but to not get too far into the weeds on this we're going to, go and get started we'll go and get set up now i do recommend for robotics that you need at least two barren planets and two lava planets for your tier one or your p1 then i also recommend that you have an additional barren and lava for your two process planets all right let's go and get set up we'll start on our first planet now if you go to the agency and then go to resource harvesting and then planetary industry you'll be able to see all of your planets in your system we're going to start with planet one here as you can see it has a lot of heavy metals about 73 percent so right click on that we're going to go to view planetary industry go over to scan I like to bring these sliders all the way down and then just kind of move them to the right and we'll want to select heavy metals there and I'm just going to keep moving it to the right until pretty much all the white is pretty much gone and we're going to pick this area right here and then we're going to go to build we're going to go lava command center you want to make sure you have your command centers in your hold and then we'll uh, just click there and then we'll hit submit we'll go ahead and get this one upgraded all the way because the way I'm going to be setting these up you're going to want command centers five and we're going to be using like the maximum amount of things here all all the uh, power and CPU and all that good stuff all right the next thing we want to do is actually get our con our extractor control unit set up we want this somewhere where the radius is covering the white area we've selected so I'm going to just go and butt it up right up next to the command center there and then I'm also going to create a link between these two. I'm going to set this for one day, 24 hours, because that is the lowest amount of execution time for the lowest amount of per cycle time. So what's going to end up happening is these extractor heads are essentially going to produce every 15 minutes. Now what we want to do is we want to drag all of these into the white, getting as much coverage as possible and then we want to make sure that none of them are overlapping as well so this one is overlapping a little bit and you'll be able to see the overlap here in like a negative percentage number so all well, that looks good what we want to make sure is under the total we want to lease that to be at least a million uh units extracted over the entire course so we'll go ahead and 
hit start extraction and then now we need to route this so we're going to uh, go to route and then create route and then we're going to click here on our command center and then create the route and so now that's going to be storing all of that material in the command center and then we'll hit submit now that's going to be running the next thing we're going to want is we're going to want a launch pad we're going to butt this up right against there we'll go and create a link for that the launch pad is going to allow you to actually get into the customs office so not a whole lot is needed there yet and then the next we want to create our lava basic industry facilities you can create as many of these as you want but i usually end up going with any like kind of an even number for the most part but all of my extraction planets are essentially done pretty much in the same format i usually put seven out first and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to link these all together so i'm going to take the corner go to the uh, launch pad corner to the launch pad this one down to the launch pad and then just run these routes straight across here and then we're going to put these to the launch pad as well so they essentially all kind of have a direct uh, link there and then we can go hit submit again and then we can see we still have quite a bit of cpu left So we're going to go ahead and create <clears throat> some additional ones. The more you have, you just want to be able to keep the uh, the raw resources um, out of there as much as possible. I probably wouldn't create more than nine here. Um, and then we can also just link these directly to the launch pad as well. We'll hit submit there. Now we're going to go ahead and set up the, uh, the plans for this. And we're essentially going to be doing uh, toxic metal because we're doing heavy metal. So we'll go talk some metal, hit install, and then our route, <clears throat> we'll be delivering this to the launch pad. And create route. And then we'll do the same thing here. Launch pad, you can double click there. And it should save, if you do it right, it should save your selection. So you can just kind of click on the thing, go install, and then double click on the launch pad. This is really um, tedious, but the, you'll get pretty good at it as you uh, start doing it more. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to the command center right there, and then we're gonna go to routes. This is all of our incoming heavy metals. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and go create route, and then just kind of work our way around. And you always want, I like to sort this by type, so incoming is at the top. So you take the highest quantity, because it's gonna be adding your new routes to the bottom of the list here. And so we just kind of go around just like um, sometimes you misclick it, it'll uh, do that. So you just gotta make sure you click route and then make sure it takes. Now, every one of all four of our extractor planets is what I like to call them, are gonna be set up the exact same way, the same configuration, same amount of uh, facilities, and the same pattern, all of that. So. To make, to make sure this video isn't super long, I am going to go ahead and set up the other three. The only thing different you're going to do is select the appropriate uh, schematic. So if you're going for reactive metals or if you're going for base metals, you know, make sure you select uh, reactive metals on your factories. And then if you're going with uh, non-CS crystals, make sure you go shale structures. And then we're going to be doing um, precious metals as well. So if you're going for noble metals, make sure you select precious metals. So repeat this step for the next three planets, creating those other three, and then uh, we'll go on to the uh, processing. Now, if you're setting up one of these planets and when you go to route the extractor, sometimes what will happen is you'll see a, over, a red percentage on that route. What that really means is that the route would essentially be uh, overloaded. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select that path and then we're gonna hit upgrade we're just going to upgrade it once. So now if we go in here and we route it again, then it won't be uh, overloaded. We just create route. Now, if you're setting up one of these planets and when you go to route the extractor, sometimes what will happen is you'll see a, over, a red percentage on that route. What that really means is that the route would essentially be uh, overloaded. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select that path and then we're gonna hit upgrade. We're just gonna upgrade it once. So now if we go in here 
and we route it again, then it won't be uh, overloaded. We just create route. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to planet six. We're going to go to view planetary industry like we've done. We don't have to worry about scanning because we're not extracting here. So we're just going to kind of zoom in and we're going to go ahead and put our command center down. I usually like keeping the command center kind of away from everything just because it doesn't mess with my overall format. But we want to go in here just like on the extractor planet. We want to upgrade it all the way. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place two of these launch pads and we'll go ahead and link these together what's happening here is one of these is going to be our intake and then one of these is going to be this basically storage or export for our p2 or our consumer electronics and our mechanical parts the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go in here and select baron advanced industry facility and we're going to essentially create 24 of these so i usually just kind of like start kind of circling all of the launch pads because you don't want to get them you don't want to build them all in a straight line or really far away the longer you put out the longer your routes are the more resources it's going to take so we're going to go ahead and just kind of go all the way up around here that gives us eight nine ten and then i'll usually do another three on the side get them as close as possible That puts us at 16, and then I'll do four down here, and then four up here, respectively. Now we go into links. For these corners, what I like to do is go from here down, make these kind of like a little like corner, and then come into this launch pad. And then we'll do the same thing for this corner, and for this one, bring it to that launch pad. And then for these, we're just going to go straight down and then straight across on these. And then the ends will just connect with straight lines there. So that's all 24 planets. You can see our power load is maxed out. We'll go ahead and hit submit. Now this is the part I was talking about with actually having enough of the tier one or the P1 to actually build all of the routes. Because what happens is we're going to go in here and essentially we're going to do our half 12 is going to be consumer electronics and then the other 12 is going to be mechanical parts. So we'll have 6 here, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to go in here. We'll go to this one. We're going to go do consumer electronics first. And then we're going to select this launch pad because I like to just kind of look at it from like left to right. So it'd be input and then output and you're going to want to remember which one is which so we have consumer electronics selected here we're just going to go route the output to this and hit create route and we'll do the same thing and we'll just kind of go through all these this is you can still do this if you don't have uh, p1 it's really when we start setting up the uh, input routes is when you're going to want plenty of a uh, p1 or tier one uh, materials but this is uh this is much more tedious than the extractor planet just because there's a lot of things to click on now we're going to go here we're going to go to mechanical parts and do the same thing on the last half making sure that we're always putting our output on the same launch pad that we've designated as output and what we'll end up end up doing here is when we drop p1 or tier 1 into the launch pad it'll automatically just feed all of these facilities and won't have to worry too much about messing with this as time goes on go and hit submit <clears throat> all right now as you can see each one of these factories is going to essentially take 40 units of the toxic metals and the shale structures. So what we're going to want to do is if this is going to be our input, this is not like an extractor where it's going to have like, you know, incoming here. 
we essentially need materials in this launch pad in order to set up routes. And we want to make sure that we've got enough in here to make all the routes. Because once you actually start making routes and you start and you hit submit, each one of these factories is going to you know, start its cycle. It's going to take 40 of each. And then it's going to take an additional 40 of each. So we want to make sure that we have enough in here to facilitate creating all these routes. Then you don't have to actually do anything um, when you start dumping uh, P1 in in the future. I recommend letting your P1 planets kind of run until you have about a thousand of each. Then you'll be able to go in here and set it all up, which we'll go ahead and show you how the route thing works now. All right, let's go ahead and fill up this planet so we can get these routes set up. So you can go here to this planet, you can right click on it, go to customs office, and then we were going to warp to zero. And once our uh, ship gets out there, we can actually go ahead and right click on it, go customs office and go access. And that'll bring up the access here. One thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go in there and you're gonna wanna look at the launch pad code for whatever your input is. And it'll, um, you'll, uh, so let's go ahead and go back into our planet here. This is our input. So we're looking for L2 TAC essentially, because the other one is J2 TAC. So L2 TAC, that's the one we want to dump stuff into L2 TAC. And if you do, if you do, um, do like I did it on the setup, most of the time your input will be at the top of this drop down list. So go ahead and go there and then we're going to go and open up and essentially what we need on this planet is all four of our p1 so i'm going to drag it into the customs office we got about 2000 of each and then we can just drag it right over into l2 tech and then we'll hit transfer nothing will happen because we don't have any routes set up yet all right now for the fun part and that's setting up routes as you can see here on your window, you can see that you have everything in storage here. So we're going to go back in here, view planetary industry. And this is where you're going to have to kind of like pay attention a little bit. If you remember all these up here is our consumer electronics. So we're going to go over here, we're going to go to storage. And then we're essentially going to need to link, if you go over here, all the ones up at the top, we're going to need to link shell structures and toxic metals so just kind of keep that in mind shell structures toxic metals so what i like to do is we're going to do the shell structures first and we'll go ahead and just create routes for all of the shell structures it might be easier too if you uh, just kind of do both just depends on how you want to do it because they will change color so you can kind of see your progress now it's very important that if you only have a thousand of each unit, do not hit submit until you have every single um, every single factory routed for the type of input you're doing. Because essentially, if we would do, let's say we did half of these, okay, we routed half of them and we hit submit. That means that all 1,000 of our units would be gone, and we have to wait for another 1,000 or another 500 rather to route the other ones. Because once we hit submit, these cycles are going to start and it's going to take 40 of each. And then it's going to immediately take another 40 of each, which would be a total of 80 each. So we want to make sure that we set up all of the consumer electronic stuff before we hit submit. Or else we're just going to be waiting even longer to get everything moving. I try to just kind of do this as quickly and as smoothly as possible so that I don't lose track of kind of where I am. So go shell structures, hit route, down to toxic metals, hit route, and just kind of repeat it that way. And if you get lost, then <laughs> like that, then uh, you just have to kind of like, you know, click on the... Uh, factory and kind of figure out where you left off at so very easy to kind of get overwhelmed at this portion because a lot going on 
I'm not going as fast as I normally do just because I'm also commentarying while doing this. And I got lost once, but we're good. There. All consumer electronics are set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually set up all of the uh, mechanical parts as well. So basically same principle, precious metal, reactive metal, all the way down. Luckily, you don't have to do this routing thing all the time. The benefit here is once you have all these routes set up, the most involvement that you'll have is just putting P1 into that launch pad and then eventually coming back and pulling the product out of the other launch pad. You won't actually ever have to come in here and mess with any of this stuff, which is nice. But for passive income, a little bit of a setup required. Not a big deal. Especially if you uh, just need some extra cash and everything. PI can be really good at that. And you can usually find people to buy electronics if you're in uh, null security because um, robotics and mechanical parts both go into fuel block manufacturing. So you might not even have to export. All right. As you can see here, we'll go back to the storage here. You can see we've got, you see it's already actually been taking them out and everything. What we're trying to prevent is the double take on everything. So we got about 15, 20 left on all of them. And we're going to hit submit. And then now if you look at it, we're down to 1,040 because it basically started all the factories and then queued up their resources for the next route. And there you go. Now we are producing mechanical parts and consumer electronics. And you can also just roll over here and kind of see what your quantities are at. And whenever these get done cycling as well, you'll be able to see what they're, what they've got stored as well. And you'll be able to kind of manage everything from here. This window is really nice. Um, I have it set to non-compact mode so you can just see for the video, but you can even make it smaller if you want to make it a permanent fixture on your UI. The last portion, and the same thing we did with the extractor plants, we waited for that P1 to get done. We're going to want to wait until we have quite a bit of P2 to route the final process planet. What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and set it up the same way that we did this planet. The robotics planet is going to be set up the exact same configuration with 24 planets. The only difference is every factory will be producing robotics. All right, now it is time to finish this whole process off. We'll go ahead and route all of the robotic factories. The first thing we need to do actually is we need to go drop off P2 or tier two rather. So we're gonna go ahead and just go all to our robotics plant customs office and then go and warp to zero. We'll go all into this planet here. I'll show you exactly how it's set up. It's set up exactly like our other process planet was, all 24 factories. Everything is set to robotics and it's all going to this launch pad. Now the code we want is 9 tech, or 9K tech for the launch pad. Go in here, go to customs office, go to access, 9K tech right there. Go ahead and drop all of our P2 in and go hit transfer. And at this point you can actually just go and dock because you can do all this from dock. So now we're going to go back in here and start routing. Just like the one before, we're going to be going here into storage. And I guess you could say it's a little simpler than what we did with the other one because you're kind of only dealing with one certain thing. And then it's only like two items instead of like four being in the list. So it could potentially be, it would be unless you just keep hitting the factories like I'm doing. But yes, by the time you get to this point, you know, it's you're not going to end up doing all this like back to back either because you're going to want to have like four or four to eight hours or so to kind of 
let everything populate. But once you get to this point, when you're routing all of the robotics, it's nice because this is when the income really starts coming in. Once you start producing and you're able to actually start stockpiling the robotics. We am going to go through here as fast as possible. I want to try to show you guys this in real time so you know that it is just as tedious as you've probably heard. And then uh, we'll t while we're doing this, we'll talk a little bit about income. Obviously, robotics are some of the, one of the more uh, interesting uh, PIs to manufacture because it is useful in fuel blocks and fuel blocks obviously are useful for fueling structures because everybody wants structures so the fact that you're actually making both robotics and mechanical parts is really nice because if you're able to be in null sec and people have need for those things you should be able you should always have like a seller or a market for your stuff as far as income goes, I think if I remember correctly, whenever I was doing it on just one character before, you're going to probably, as long as you're staying on top of it and you keep resetting your cycle every 24 hours for your tractor planets, you're going to probably end up making somewhere in the neighborhood of like 50 or so million a day. Obviously, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but if all you're doing every day is just going into your extractor planets and hitting restart and then occasionally going out and picking up and moving stuff around 50 million is uh is pretty decent considering that it's running as long as you're keeping your plants fed it's running while you're not even online or while you're just doing absolutely anything else so that's why i enjoy pi because it's uh, essentially something that you can plan out you can scale and all of that. And we'll talk a little bit more about scaling once we kind of get this all done. We're almost there. Mechanical parts, create route, click, create, and submit. Bam. And we're done. Now everything is set up. Now what you're going to want to do is every single day, come in here, open up your planetary industry. If you see a the red X mark or whatever on here, you want to go in here. You want to click on your extractor, go into the program, and you'll want to hit start extractor. As long as your total raw volume for the entire 24 hours is over a million, you're good. If it's a little bit less, then you can move these around and things like that. But you can even go as low as 800,000 raw and still be fine. Um, the purpose is just kind of getting a good sustainability of, uh, of stuff being processed. And then you can also kind of let that stuff sit in the, uh, the launch pad for a while because it'll take a while to fill up like this. We've completed a couple of cycles here. And as you can see, the, uh, the launch pad is, you know, nowhere near full. So you don't have to be really micromanaging with it. You can let this stuff kind of max out and before you move it, same with all this, you can go in here and check, you can see how your, your raw resources are doing. And then, uh, how much space you have left in your, your export. When this gets about like, three-fourths away full when you have about three-fourths of uh your launch pad is full of uh consumer electronics and mechanical parts that's usually when i uh take them out and and go and deliver them to the robotics planet and i use a crane as you probably noticed for my pi because it has faster warp time it has covert ops if you need to but you can also use an ethanol and you can actually you know get all this stuff in either ship if you're picking it up regularly and most time I'm picking this stuff up and moving stuff around once a day if I'm bored twice a day it really depends I like to kind of you know piddle with it and min max it a little bit but it's all kind of up to whatever you need and everything but I hope you enjoyed the video I know it's a lot to like you know go through and everything but like I said set up all your extractor plants the kind of in the same way you'll see that's one of them and then here's another one. They're all roughly set up. They're all set up in the same configuration, maybe just different orientations. And if you find that you have a lot of uh, stockpiled um, raw resources, you can potentially add a couple more factories depending. The one thing I will note though, when you're selecting a planet for your uh, process planets, not all planets are created equal. Now, 
not all planets are going to allow you, not all planet types are going to allow you to put 24 factories here. The way you tell is when you go in here, if that planet allows you to place a high-tech production plant, it'll it'll have enough, um, uh, I guess, it'll, it'll allow you to actually put this many. So, like, if you go to, like, an ice planet, an ice planet won't let you put a high-tech down, and when you try to put 24 factories in this same exact configuration, it'll let you do, like, 22 for some odd reason. But that's just how it goes. That's why it's usually barren or lava for me for my process planets because I know I can get all 24. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.